good morning guys i hope you guys are getting my screen voice please respond on chat box phones you guys are getting my screen and voice all of you getting my voice you guys can see my screen please confirm once in chat box good today we are going to discuss version controlling version controlling so what is the exact meaning for this version controlling what is the meaning for this version controlling in the name itself we have just try to understand what is the meaning just the english meaning i am asking forget about technically version controlling means what controlling the different versions of the software is called as version controlling controlling different versions of the software is called as version controlling controlling different versions of the software is called as version controlling read the statement guys controlling different versions of the software is called as version controlling imagine see imagine i have one developer so developers created some code today today developers created some code see in this system developer created some code after creating the code he uploaded in version controller so whatever the code this developer is created at where this developer created the code in their local mission in their local mission he created some code after completing the code development he uploaded this code into the version controller where he is uploading in remote server which is the version control this remote server remote server is called as what version control and here this developer is going to upload this entire code in this version controller after completing the development he will upload the code into this version control right with the name with the name version 1.0 with the name version 1.0 guys observe carefully what i am doing developer created some code in his local mission and he uploaded this code into the remote server with the name version 1.0 this developer created some code in his local mission he uploaded same code into the remote server with the name version 1.0 next day he came to the office and he downloaded the code next day he came to the office and he downloaded the code from remote server maybe other team members also other team members also did some changes in same file and they also uploaded into the remote server that's why every day at a morning once these people came to the office they need to take the latest code from the remote server right first day this person developed some code and uploaded into the remote server 
next day again he came to the office right inside the remote server whatever the latest code is available that code he downloaded into his machine understood what i am doing next day he downloaded the code into his machine and again he started working on it again he started working on it working in the sense what they might create new programs or they might modify the existing programs whatever right based on requirement right if requires he will create some new programs or existing code only he will modify and whatever it second day again they will upload the code into this version controller again into remote server at right? second day after completing his work what he will do again he will upload the code into remote server with the name version 2.0 version 2.0 right so again third day came third day right again he download the code from remote server and he did some changes changes in the sense one minute guys <sighs> Third day, again he came to the office, and again he downloaded the code from remote server, and again he did some changes. Changes in the sense, might he might write some programs or he modify existing code, whatever it. And again he upload the code into remote server with the name version three point zero. Version three point zero. So like that, so on and like that. Right, he uploaded around. 10 versions and he uploaded around 10 versions finally version name is 10.0 version name 10.0 guys again i am repeating please concentrate what is version controlling controlling different versions of the software is called as version controlling imagine developer created some code developer created some code and uploaded that code into the remote server with the name version 1.0 at right. day one first day developer created some code and uploaded into remote server with the name version 1.0 second day again he downloaded latest code from the remote server and again he did some programs and right he might write write some programs or modify existing code whatever it He did some changes, and again he uploaded the code into remote server with version 2.0. Third day again he came to the office and he downloaded latest code from the remote server and he did some changes and again he uploaded into the remote server with version 3.0. So like this, keep on daily same activity, right? So tenth day, tenth day he downloaded the code and he did some changes and he uploaded with version 10.0 with 10.0 and. Right. So on the tenth day, just imagine these guys had meeting with the client. End. Tenth day, these people had a meeting with the client, and they came to the conclusion like this. What conclusion they came under? They came to the conclusion like this code was created entirely wrong. And whatever the whatever the code developed by these developers that is entirely wrong. client asked for one functionality and developers are developed something else and client asked one functionality but these developers are developed for something else so now what development team will do development team will start the root cause analysis what is the problem where problem occurs the root cause analysis these people started and right so to find out the issue and to find out the problem these people started root cause analysis said it right. finally they came to the conclusion something went wrong they found out an issue they found out something went wrong right 
So what they will do? They will check one by one. Only. Day one code was created correctly. Day two also code was created correctly. Day three also code was created correctly. From day four, from day four code was created wrongly. From day four, whatever the code these guys are developed, that is entirely wrong. Only. That is entirely wrong. Up to day three. Right, everything is good. Day one they created correctly. Day two they created correctly. Day four also. Day day three they created correctly. From day four onwards, something went wrong. Something went wrong. And so now what these people will do? What these people will do? And so what version controlling is doing here? So now what version control system will do is they preserve. Old versions of the code and also latest versions of the code also appear. What version control is doing? Right. So they preserve old versions. Whatever the code he uploaded at day one, so that code is preserving. Day two code also preserving separately. Right. Day three code also preserving separately like this. Right? Whatever the code these guys are uploaded day one, that code is preserving. Whatever the code uploaded day two, that code also preserving. Whatever the code uploaded day three, that code also preserving at here. Understood, guys? Now the development team can simply switch back to version three and up to which version the code is correct. Up to which version the code is correct? Simply the development team will switch back to that version instead of rewriting from beginning. Instead of rewriting from beginning. Up to which version code went correct? Right, they will switch to that version. From there, again they will start the development. Right? From there, again they will start the development. So that is the main definition of the version controlling system. Right? What it is doing? It is preserving older versions and the latest versions also. If anything goes wrong. They can check like this, and they can switch to any version which they wanted. They can switch to any version which they want. Is this clear, guys? Please respond once. Right. Once again, I am going to explain. Concentrate. Very very important things we are discussing. Right. So assume, imagine, developer is. A, creating the code in his local system developer is creating the code in his local system end of the day he will upload this code into remote server end of the day he will upload the code into remote server with the name version 1.0 right the second day he came to the office and he will take latest code from the remote repository he will download the latest code from the remote repository and he will work on that <coughs> he will work on that end. Maybe based on requirement, if he wants to, he will write new programs or he will modify the existing code. At the end of second day, again he will upload this code into remote server and he will with the name version two point zero. First day he uploaded with version one point zero name. Second day he uploaded with one point two point zero name. Third day again, he came to the office and he downloaded the code from remote server and he did some changes. Again, he uploaded that code into remote server with the name version three point zero one. So like this, daily same activity. At the tenth day, he downloaded the code and he did some changes and he uploaded with the name version ten point zero. Tenth day, these people had a meeting with the client. Tenth day, this development team had a meeting with the client. Right in that client meeting, they came to they came to one conclusion. What is that? The code, whatever these guys are developed, so that is entirely wrong way these guys are developed. Right? Whatever the code these people are developed, that is entirely wrong. Client is client asked for one functionality. These guys are developed something else. Right? These guys are developed something else. So now the development team. Has done RCA. RCA means root cause analysis to find out where things went wrong. Understood, guys? Right. So once they came to the conclusion, everything is went wrong. Development team started. 
right rca rca root cause analysis to find out where things went wrong and right finally they got it finally they find out found out so <coughs> finally what they did they found out the issue and right day one everything is developed correctly day two everything is developed correctly day three also everything is developed correctly from day four onwards things went wrong from day four onwards the things went wrong and so now what development team will do they won't start again from beginning and they won't start again from beginning here what version control is doing version controlling is preserving older versions of the data and the latest versions of the data also right from which version onwards things went wrong from version 4 version version 4 onwards things went wrong and so now development team directly will switch to version 3.0 why up to 3.0 everything is correct so these guys will switch to version 3.0 from there again they will start the coding and they won't start from beginning beginning everything is correct only right day 2 also everything is correct only day 3 also everything is correct only why they need to start from beginning not required not required and right here version controlling is preserving all the previous versions and the latest versions here developers have the flexibility to which version they want to switch and right so developers have the flexibility to switch to switch from one version to another version right now they are in version 10.0 now what these guys are doing they are switching version 3.0 from there again they will start the code understood guys is this clear please respond once is it clear what version controlling is doing it is preserving older versions and the latest versions of both end. right so this is the main definition of version controlling and so now you guys tell me instead of using this version control system imagine my company is using shared folder and shared drive instead of version controlling system my company is using shared folder and basically what what did I, what did i say and so i just said that you want to combine the code you want to integrate the code which is created by everyone and so you want to integrate the code combine the code which is created by each and every developer and each and every developer developer one developer two developer three whatever the code these guys are developing you want to integrate that code and you want to integrate that code right so now in my network i put the shared folder and all the team members will upload the code into shared folder because it is a shared folder so whatever the code is uploaded by the team members all of us can see and correct or right so here assume this is the shared folder developer 1 is uploading the code into shared folder developer 2 uploading the code into shared folder developer 3 is also uploading the code into shared folder and so now whatever the code is available in this shared folder so that code everyone can see and everyone can see but the problem with the shared folder is when we use the shared folder when we use the shared folder see we uploaded the code into the shared shared folder right i download the code from the shared folder and i did some changes set after making the changes again i uploaded the changes into shared folder what it will happen what it will happen right here we are editing the file and here editing the file when you edit the file the older data will will be lost whatever the older data first uploaded data whatever we have that data will be lost at here right here latest data is overriding it here it is overriding the on top of old data so here you won't get the previous version set in shared folder the problem is the older data will be lost always the latest data only available in the shared folder shared folder does not maintain the versions like this set shared folder does not preserve the older versions and the latest versions right always it will override the data inside the shared folder that is the problem correct or not guys please respond in shared folder it will preserve older versions and latest versions no it won't preserve only always it will update it 
it will update it will override always and so you won't get old data old data will be lost in shared folder said understood so now tell me which one is better shared folder or version controlling guys clear what is the difference between shared folder and version controlling system Right. See, guys. Here, version controlling system means which one we are using? We are using Git. Tank. Git is the version controlling system we are using it here. Here, version controlling system we have. It. So now observe very carefully. Right. A developer created a file. Developer created a file with name file one dot Java. Developer created a file with name file one dot Java, and he wrote some code inside this file. He wrote some code inside the file, and he uploaded this file into version controlling. He uploaded the code into remote repository with the name version. 1.0 with the name version 1.0 right so next day again he downloaded the same code and uh, he did some more changes and he did some more changes on the same file and again he uploaded this code into report repository with the name version 2.0 with the name version 2.0 like this and understood guys is taking the same file, did some modification into that code, and he is uploaded. And he is uploaded into version controlling system only. Right. So here observe carefully. It will be preserved separately. And right here, whatever the file he uploaded second time, it will preserve that file separately. And version 1.0 preserve separately, and version 2.0 also preserve separately at here. First day, what he is uploaded, so that is preserved separately. And second day, what is uploaded, that is also preserved separately. They right. Here, nothing is getting overriding. Yet. Nothing is getting overriding. First day, he created file one point, file one, sorry, file one dot Java. Inside that, he wrote some code and he uploaded with the name version one point zero. Second day, that right, again he took same code. And he did some changes and he uploaded that code with name version 2.0. See, first day, whatever he uploaded, so that is preserved separately. And second day, what he is uploaded, that is also preserved separately. Here, it is not getting overriding anything. Second day uploaded code is not overriding on top of that first day uploaded code. And separately, both are separate. Both are separate. Right? The developer can have the flexibility to switch from one version to another version at here. Understood, guys? Because multiple versions of the code are available at any point of time. Developer has the flexibility to switch into whichever version he wants and he can continue from there. Because of multiple versions, that the code here, what is happening in version controlling system? Multiple versions of the code are available. And multiple versions of the codes are available. At any point of time, developer has the flexibility to switch into which version he want and he can continue from there. And understood this point? Is this clear? Please respond. At every point of time, developer should have the flexibility to move into one older versions to any of any older version to current version or current version to older version, vice versa. At any point of time, developer should have the flexibility to move into any older version or current version. This is another concept of version controlling. The third aspect of the version controlling is 
right version controlling system keep a track of who is making what kind of changes see today my friend my colleague my friend developed one functionality and he uploaded the code into version controlling system he uploaded the code into remote repository right so now now i don't like that person and his friend okay he is working in my team that's why he is my friend but i don't like that person i want to disturb that code and whatever the code my friend is uploaded so i want to disturb that code so just and right put one put just one semicolon comma that code won't work and it will gone if you add one comma or colon or a point in the middle of the code it won't work and so that's why what i did so whatever the code my friend is uploaded i will go to that file and i added some comma or pull stop something and so that code is not working and that code is not working and but version control will maintain right who modified the files those details also and what version controlling is doing it will keep a track of who is making what kind of changes if you go to that version controlling system and if you verify right so you can able to see what your friend is uploaded after that who try to corrupt that file who try to disturb that file everything we can able to see in that version controlling system and if you upload any code right it will right here uh, your employee id your id and something something every person have some id and unique id and right with that id code will be committed at here and with that id code will be committed tomorrow if anyone wants to if anyone try to disturb that code if anyone add one full stop or comma anything right that code will be committed with that person id and that person id so easily we can identify who uploaded actual code and who disturbed that code everything we can identify very easily that is the third aspect of the version controlling system and here what it is doing third aspect version controlling is version control system keep a track who is making what kind of changes understood guys pradeep clear other guys total three things we discussed at here three things we discussed at here and what three things we discussed at here what things we discussed at here version controlling is doing two three, three things and what three things let me add those points let me add those points and very very important these three points main three aspects of the version controlling system main three aspects of the version controlling system what aspects are there first one first one it is taking the code coming from all the team members and it is creating one integrated project it is taking the code coming from the coming from the coming from all the team members and and it is creating and it is creating one integrated project first point is clear what version controlling system is doing first activity first aspect it is taking the code coming from all the team members and assume in your project the five developers are available right version controlling system will take the code from all five developers and it will integrate all that code as a single project in version controlling system and understood this point it is taking the code coming from all the team members and it is creating one integrated project what is the second aspect what is the second point version control is doing second point what is the second point it is preserving the older versions of the code and the latest versions of the code also both versions and it is 
preserving the older versions and latest versions of the code also latest versions of the code also version controlling system is preserving both older versions and later versions of the code right so developer has the flexibility to switch from one version to another version at any point of time developer has the flexibility to switch from one version to another version at any point of time and in version controlling system you will have all the versions that from day one to till today from day one till today whatever the versions you created all those versions are available there is no concept of overriding it here there is no concept of overriding it here that everything will be preserved separately version one will be preserved separately version two will be preserved separately version three will be preserved separately developer has the flexibility to switch from one version to another version at any point of time so this is the second aspect of the version controlling system what is the third aspect of the version controlling system it is making the track who is making what kind of changes and what it is doing it is making the track of who is making what kind of changes it is making it is making the track of who is making what kind of changes this is the third aspect it is making the track of who is making what kind of changes and these three activities version controlling system is doing it please read these three statements version controlling is doing these three activities only these three concepts which we are going to learn in version controlling system all these things we are going to learn and to perform all these activities we need to use different different commands by using those commands we will do all these activities so we are going to learn all these things at the main three aspects of the version controlling system it is taking the code coming from all the team members and it is creating one integrated project second one it is preserving the older versions and the latest versions of the code third one it is making the track who is making what kind of changes and clear guys please respond once all these points are clear please respond up to here any questions all right so now in it in it sector in it sector there are two types of version controlling systems version controlling systems in it sector so there are two types of there are below two types of below two types of version controlling systems so what two types are there one is one is centralized version controlling system second one is distributed version controlling system distributed version controlling system this is told in it sector two types of version controlling systems are available one is a centralized version controlling system second one is distributed version controlling system one these two things are available right so now first tell me what is centralized version controlling system what is centralized version controlling system
to what is centralized version controlling system what happen in centralized version controlling system so now whatever the diagram we have drawn earlier whatever the diagram we have drawn earlier so that is a central version central central centralized version controlling system only that is centralized version controlling system only see one remote repository is available developer 1 is available developer 2 is available developer 3 is available developer 1 will upload the code into remote server developer 2 will upload the code into remote server developer 3 will upload the code into remote server in this remote server only integration is performing right preserving different different versions also performing it here only right it is maintaining the track and it is tracking of everything what changes who did what changes all those details also making it here only in all the three aspects all the version controlling system three aspects happening in this remote server only not in individual machines in individual machines what we have only code is available and what developer one is creating that code is available in the system what developer two is creating that code is available in the system what developer three is creating that code is available in the system that's all and in individual machines we have only code right so all version controlling aspects here i noted three aspects and here i noted three aspects all these three aspects are happening where in remote server only in remote server here only all those three aspects are happening not at here and not at here here we have only code individual developer created code is available in the systems right integrating is happening at here only maintaining different different versions also happening at here only tracking the details also happening at here only not at the individual system level clear guys here you have remote server all the developers will create the code on their local machines and they uploaded the code into remote server this is the remote server this is the remote server all the developers will create the code into their local machine this is local machine this is local machine this is local machine all the developers will create the code into their local machines and they upload the code into remote server right so only on remote server version controlling is happening all three aspects of the version controlling system is happening in remote server only on the local machines of the local machines what we have only code and only code programs are available and right the classical example for centralized version controlling is svn svn and svn means what and subversion subversion is nothing but subversion is the best example for this centralized version controlling system and this is the licensed software and svn is the licensed software so this is the best example for centralized version controlling system svn svn means subversion clear guys see so now clear what is central version cent centralized version controlling system centralized version controlling system means what we have remote server and all the individual developers we have and the right? developers are creating the code in their local machines and they are uploading it into remote server all version controlling aspects are happening in the remote server only right that is nothing but centralized version controlling system and so the best example for centralized version controlling system is svn and svn means subversion svn means what subversion and okay next coming to distributed version controlling system and distributed version controlling system this is very very powerful and so we are going to learn distributed version controlling system only this is very very powerful right observe carefully guys imagine imagine we have individual machines and we have individual machines of the developers like this and right we have uh two developers like this one minute here i'm going to take diagram like this 
individual developer. Right. So here, first of what he is doing, he is creating some code in this system. He is creating some code. After that, so in this system only, right? These guys are installed in this mission only, right? So what these guys are did and initially in every developer's mission, we installed something called as local repository. Local repository and right here only. Here only, so we installed one local repository on each and every individual mission sending. So this is what local repository. Local repository. Right, a local repository will be present on every developer's mission. Local repository will be present on every developer's mission. The code created by the developer initially will be pushed into this local repository. Initially, whatever the code is developed by the developer, that code will be pushed into local repository. Right. So, in this local repository, version controlling will happen at the level of what individual developer. See, in this local repository, version controlling is happening at the level of individual developer. Inside this local repository, whatever the code is available, that code is visible to only this developer. Right, version controlling is happening in this local repository also, but only, only individual developer level. And other persons can't be able to see what code is available in this local repository. Other persons can't be able to access the code which is available in this local repository. So this can be accessible by only this developer. Right, understood? Guys, clear? What is local repository? In each and every individual mission, we are installing one software is called as local repository. Right, local repository will be present on every developer's mission set. The code created by the developer, initially, he will push into this local repository. In this local repository, version controlling will happen at the level of individual developer. Understood? See here also, here also we have one more developer system. Here also we have one more developer system. Code is available. Right. So in this system also, in this system also local repository is available. In this system also, local repository installed. So now, so what this developer will do, whatever the code this developer is developed, initially, he will upload that code into this local repository, right? So here, in this local repository, also version controlling is happening at uh, only this developer level, and only this developer level. Right. So only this developer can able to access this code. Only this developer can able to see this code. And so this developer can't able to see what code is available in this local repository. So this developer can't able to see what code is available in this local repository. Right. Whoever, right, in which system this local repository is installed. So that person only can able to access this local repository. Understood? Right. Again, again, from this local repository, whatever the code is available, that code will be pushed into remote server. From the local repository, in this, inside this local repository, some code is available. Again, this code we should do, right, this remote server. This code will be pushed into remote server like this. And this is a remote server. Right. So again, here also version controlling is happening. And integrating the code, maintaining the versions, right? tracking of the details, all those things are happening in this remote server also. But inside this remote server, whatever the code is available, that code is available to both the developers. Right. Here, inside this local repository, what code is available, that code can be accessible by only this developer. 
but inside this remote repository what code is available that code can be accessible by all the team members and all the developers and it is available for all and understood that here version controlling is happening at the level of entire team and version controlling is happening at the level of entire team but here individual developer level only here version controlling is happening at individual developer level but here entire team level and entire team level and imagine imagine today one developer created some code and uploaded it into the local repository right local repository and he went for lunch and and he went for lunch after coming back see and what is the advantage of remote uh, local repository i'm telling see first day so this developer created some code and uploaded that code into remote repository and he went for lunch he went for lunch again he came back from the lunch and he took the code from this local repository and he did some more modifications in that and again he uploaded that code into this local repository so now tell me how many versions are available in this local repository guys please respond how many versions are available in this local repository before going to the lunch he uploaded the code into this local repository with the name version 1.0 right after coming back from the lunch again he took the code and he did some changes and again he uploaded into local repository with the name version 2.0 so now tell me inside this local repository how many versions of the code is available two versions of the code is available and two versions on the first developer local repository how many versions are there two versions are there and so these two versions are not visible to the other team members inside this local repository whatever the two versions are available those two versions are not visible to the other team members and only that fellow system he has uploaded two versions at any point of time he can switch into any of these two versions sir only this developer uploaded two versions at any point of time he can switch between any version and 1.0 or 2.0 whatever he want he can switch it right before lunch what code he was created so that version he can use after lunch what code he was created that version he can use and anything he can use and later once he comes to the conclusion once he came to the conclusion that everything is properly working and that everything is proper working condition he will upload into the remote server and right once he came to the conclusion that everything is working fine then only he will upload this code inside this local repository whatever the code is available so that code into this uh, remote server that code he will push into remote server and and in the remote server version controlling will happen at the level of entire team and so whenever he uploaded the code into remote server that code is visible to all the team members and entire project in our project how many members are working all those members can able to see this code and that's why i'm saying right in remote server version controlling is happening uh, at the level of entire team and individual system version controlling is happening at the level of individual developer side right remote server version controlling will happen at the level of entire team and so this is called as distributed version controlling this is called as what distributed version controlling so now guys tell me what is the advantage of this distributed version controlling what is the advantage of this distributed version controlling by chance by chance if the remote server goes down see by chance if the remote server goes down goes down it still it is possible to maintain the complete hierarchy which in our local machine inside local repository inside this remote server whatever the code is available everything is available in our local repository also suppose by chance and it won't get down and by chance 
if this remote server is corrupted or crashed right so you can take the code from this local repository right here whatever we have so that entire hierarchy is available in this local repository also you can take this code and uh, you can create one more remote server understood guys what i am telling if this remote repository corrupted no problem don't worry in our local repository we have entire hierarchy take that code and create another remote repository understood guys this point is clear please respond guys this is one advantage this is one advantage that's why i told by chance and this is very rare case and right this is very rare case this is not main advantage of distributed uh, version controlling system i will explain so this is also one possibility we have next one next one and very very important feature and imagine imagine we have set of two developers and imagine we have set of two developers who are working on different different modules and suppose if you take banking application suppose if you take bank application we can see different different modules and bank application we can see different different modules like loans module personal banking credit cards debit cards like the different different modules we can see in banking application right now imagine two set of developers working on the loans functionality and two set of developers are working on the personal banking functionality observe very carefully here you guys will get clear picture about distributed version controlling system here so one developer two developers and two developers are there developer one developer two right. so developer one is creating some code into his mission some code in his mission and code and so the system we install in the system we install local repository also right so at the same way in developer 2 mission also he is creating some code and he also have local repository he also have local repository like this in developer 1 system local repository is available in developer 2 system also local repository is available developer 1 created some code and he uploaded the code into this local repository developer 2 created some code and he uploaded into this local repository right so these two people are working on loans functionality loans functionality finally in this local repository in this local repository whatever the code is available see and observe very carefully so he is the developer 1 he is developer 2 right the developer 1 whatever the code is created that code is uploaded into this local repository here version controlling is happening at individual person individual developer level here version controlling is happening here also version controlling is happening at individual developer level right inside this local repository whatever the code is available that code can be visible to this person only inside this local repository what code is available this person only can see it right now in both the local repositories whatever the code is available that the code these guys are uploading into one remote repository for loans module only only for loans module these guys are these guys are maintaining one remote repository remote server for loans only for loans and only for loans remote server is available in these two local repositories whatever the code is available that code is pushing into this uh, remote repository understood guys so here remote server is available only for loans module and so these two guys are implemented only loans functionality so now these two guys are uploaded the code into this remote repository now inside this remote repository version controlling is happening at the team level 
team level and not for entire project level so only this team can able to see the code which is available inside the remote repository of for loans in this remote repository whatever the code is available that code can see by only these two developers these two team members right whoever working on this loans team those people can able to see the code which is available in this remote server for loans right here version controlling is happening at a team level team level here version controlling is happening at individual developer level individual developer level here version controlling is happening at the team level team level now observe very carefully same way same way we have two more set of developers we have two more set of developers developer 1 and uh, developer two, two more set of developers we have. Observe carefully. Two more set of developers we have, right? So these two guys are working on something different functionality, not loans. Right? Loans are different team. If our loans, different team is available, right? These two guys are working on uh, personal banking, personal banking something. So now. Right, he is writing some code for personal banking and he uploaded that code into local repository. Again, this guy also implementing some code related to personal banking and he uploaded the code into remote repository. Okay, now observe very carefully. Remote re local repository, local repository. Right, whatever the code is developed by this developer. So it will upload into this local repository. Whatever the code is developed, this developer will upload into this remote repository. And here, version controlling is happening at individual developer level. Version controlling is happening at individual developer level. So now here, <coughs> we are taking one remote repository. Here we are taking one remote repository. remote repo repository for personal banking for personal banking right so now inside this observe very carefully distributed version controlling system see inside this local repository whatever the code is available and inside this local repository whatever the code is available right both the things are uploading into this uh, remote repository for personal banking system both the codes are uploading into this remote repository so now here in this remote repository version controlling is happening at the entire team level so this team is working on what personal banking this team is working on what loans now observe very carefully this team can't able to see this loans functionality this team can't able to see this personal banking functionality understood guys right so this team can't able to see personal banking functionality this team can't able to see loans functionality and here two different remote repositories are available right so now finally finally what we are doing here we are taking one more report repository here we are taking one more repo, remote repository for entire application for entire application remote repository for remote repository for bank application bank application bank application means all those things will come under this application only now inside this loans inside this loans repository whatever the code is available that code is uploading into this remote repository inside this personal banking remote repository what code is available that code also uploading into this remote repository now in this remote repository version controlling is happening for entire entire project level entire application level here only team level here only team level here individual level individual level here entire application level entire application level version controlling is happening this is nothing but distributed version controlling system understood guys
first version controlling is happening only at the level of individual developer next version controlling is happening at the level of two developers later those two remote repositories those two remote repositories so loans and personal banking right can merge in one more bigger remote repository this is a remote repository for my entire application in this way we can have multiple levels of multiple levels of remote repositories centralized version centralized version controlling system does not have this supported centralized version controlling system does not support for this end it has only one remote server in centralized remote version controlling system only one remote server all the team members will upload the code into that remote server only in distributed version controlling system first of all version controlling is happening at individual developer level later version controlling is happening at individual team level and later we can do version controlling at the level of the entire project end. understood but if you go with the central version cent centralized version controlling system so this thing is not happen there and so there we have only one remote server right all the developers should upload the code into that remote server only but here level by level we have it. level by level we have individual level we have team level we have entire application level we have in distributed version controlling system understood guys clear this one what is the difference between centralized version controlling system and a distributed version controlling system in centralized version controlling system we have only one remote repository all the developers should upload the code into that remote repository only but coming to distributed version controlling system at right, individual level we have one repository team level we have one level one level repository and the entire application level also we have one repository understood please respond is this clear what is the difference between these two respond guys is it clear or not clear pradeep only one person said yes what about others right so now already i told centralized version system version controlling system for centralized version controlling system we will use svn subversion what about this distributed version controlling system git we are going to use to perform distributed version controlling system we are going to use git to perform this distributed version controlling system so we are going to learn git git understood guys who will perform this distributed version controlling system git please observe this diagram if you guys have any questions you guys can ask clear now we are going to learn git and git the git commands all those things we are going to practice to perform this distributed version controlling system understood what we are going to learn we are going why i explained these all all these things clear to perform this distributed version controlling system we are going to learn git and from tomorrow onwards we are going to see all the git commands we need to by heart all those commands and in devops one advantage is there and that you can attend for tool wise also if you are strong in jenkins that you can attend only you can attend interviews for only jenkins position and if you are strong in ansible you can attend for the interviews only for ansible position 
if you are strong in this git commands and all those things you can attend for the interviews on this git commands and that's why after completing one tool you guys can start the start attending for the interviews you guys not required to wait until completing all the tools and parallelly you will complete all those things after completing one tool you guys can start attending for the interviews later you guys slowly you guys can add other tools also in your resume and keep on attending for the interviews and it very good market is there now compare with any other technologies devap people are getting huge salaries and recently one of my friend got uh, he have 6 years of experience 6 years of experience that person have for 6 years he got 36 lakhs package and for 6 years 36 lakhs package plus they asked to do the certifications on aws and that company asked the company offered to do the certification right once he complete that certification he will get 6 lakhs bonus also already he completed that certification and he got that 6 lakhs also total how much 36 plus 6 42 lakhs and for how many years of experience 6 years of experience so that much good demand is there huge demand is there for a devops and right. after 2 months you guys also can get this much of packages if you guys have good experience if you guys will put more than 3 years of experience definitely you guys also will get good packages on devops two months please practice the commands which i am going to teaching here right getting job is not that much difficult in devops only commands we need to practice nothing they won't ask to write any programs in interview and here in devops we don't have any scope to learn the programming and only one only one opportunity is python by writing python script we are doing some automation in automation sir clear <laughs> okay guys we'll continue in next session now clear right so what is version controlling what main three aspects we have in version controlling system right in industry what types of version controlling systems people will use right what is a centralized version controlling system and what is a distributed version controlling system all are clear in today's session what we discussed guys first we discussed what is version controlling system next what aspects what aspects we have in version controlling system next what is a centralized version controlling system and what is a distributed version controlling system that's it just remember these points in your right in your minds don't think more just remember all these points in your minds that's all in next class we'll discuss remaining things okay fine okay thank you guys we'll continue in next session <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.